I'm fine. I, I really am. Well, I appreciate your, your wanting to come over and check on me. I really do, but, but I, I couldn't be better, really. I love you, too. Yes, I will. I will call in the morning and I'll report. Bye. The sweet amnesiac who's lost two years of her memory. It's getting harder and harder, isn't it? Oh, I had to double think every word I said. Well, those are the breaks when we decide to lie. Well, I'm not even supposed to know that she was ill last summer. How long do you think you can pull this off? Uh -huh, as long as I have to. It's got to be a little taxing on the gray matter. I can handle it. Besides, it's worth it. You really think you're getting to Dimitri? Excuse me. Excuse me. Well, Mr. Merrick. How lovely. Won't you please come in? You? Did Brian, did Brian upset you? Oh, of course he didn't. Look, it's okay. It's okay. We don't have to talk about this here. We can we can talk about it in the car on the way home. Come on, let's go. No! What do you mean, no? I want to stay here. I want mom. Dad, you can see your mother now. How is she? She just had a very major heart attack. That's why I've got to be with you. That's why you have to be careful. Your mother's just hanging in. It's still touch and go. What are you saying? I'm saying that your mother is fighting hard. We're doing everything we can to help her. What she doesn't need is an hysterical son. He knows to be careful. Good. Under no circumstances can you alarm her. I would never do anything on purpose to hurt my mother, Dr. Hammond. Look, as long as you understand that your mother is exhausted, she needs to conserve every ounce of her energy. I understand. You promise you will not stay long and be careful what you say? Of course. She's going to make it, right? She's got to. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm going to stick around. We'll talk later. Thanks. Mrs. Orsini, you need to be as quiet as you can be. Ted, he's on his way. Now, you don't have to worry about him. All you have to do is rest. That's all. Just rest. Must see Dixie. Important. I spoke to Dixie. She's on her way. Now, don't worry. Dixie, I'll go and see if she's here yet, okay? Now, you, you just rest, all right? Didn't I tell you that, uh, that's the most important man of my life. That was the man I was going to marry, or remarry. Hi. Ted, you're here. Of course I'm here. What'd you expect? You have to stay. She's...
All My Children. Brought to you by I Can't Believe It's Not Butter, the taste you love without the cholesterol. You won't go. I'm here for the night. Everything's going to be okay. Sure it will. She'll be here. Mother? Don't think about anybody but yourself now. Okay? Everything worked out. Us here, perfect timing. I know now. You were happy in love. Don't make me get tough with you. I want you to rest. You have to understand. I do understand. No. I do. No, you don't. You were safe before you came back. You were happy. That doesn't matter now. You're the only thing I care about. You were happy. All right. All right. I was happy, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. The only thing that you're supposed to be thinking about is getting better, right? That's your job now, okay? You have to meet her. I will. I will. I promise. But you can't concern yourself with me or her or anybody else right now. You're worried. Don't. Please. Happy. I know so much. They took care of you. What are you talking about? Good care Mother, of don't, you. Don't do this to yourself. You really are my son. Of course I am. I came back, remember? That was our miracle. I told Edmund all about it. It makes quite a story. But now, I want you to relax. Just rest. I won't go anywhere. I promise I'll stay right here. I'll hold your hand while you're asleep. Please. Just sleep. Son. Of course you like your mom. And you want to be with her. And you love her. And that's wonderful. And you like this house, and you like your room upstairs, don't you? Can I stay in my room? Well, stay here, and let all the fun we've been having together just go right out the window, just like that. We've only been together a few weeks. Already we're on a roll. Horseback riding, ice skating, movies with popcorn, <laughs> limo rides to get ice cream. With toppings. Yeah, toppings. And what about our plans to, to set up your own computer room? Well, if I'd known he wanted a computer, I would have had one installed here long ago. Of course you could have had one here. I, I just didn't know you liked those. Adam Jr. got his own for Christmas. And you know what else? All the software and the games arrived today. They're waiting at our house, just waiting for us to have fun. Thought maybe we could play every one of those games after supper tonight. You've been looking forward to that, haven't you? Well, that sounds like fun, sweetheart, and you can do that, but you could do that another night at Daddy's if you really want to. No, no, no. He wants to play him tonight. Don't you? You know what else? You remember that video that you wanted that they were out of? Well, I called the store. They have tons of them now. So we'll stop on the way home, pick one up, and then we'll have hamburgers and McKay's. And chocolate shakes? <laughs> oh, a born negotiator. 
You're just like your dad. As good as any Wall Street tycoon. Just what every child should aspire to. You're gonna have a dynamite life ahead of you, son. Yeah, we can keep you out of reform school. Junior will be able to do anything he wants. Especially if his father paves the way. You know what car I brought to pick you up in? The limo. Yay! <laughs> Wouldn't pick you up in anything less. Now, why don't you run out real quick and tell Herbert to start that engine up? Atta boy, quickly! Wait, 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 So much for your attempts to turn my son against me. I am not trying to turn Junior against you. It isn't as easy as you thought, is it? <sighs> is there something that we can do for you? I wanted to see how Erica was feeling. Well, how sweet of you. Thank you. I'm feeling wonderful, really. And it's so glorious to be home. I uh, was wondering if... Maybe coming back to familiar surroundings. Uh, no negative effects, I hope. Oh, no, I mean, just the nicest feelings possible. I, I feel so safe, so secure here. Well, of course, what woman wouldn't with a, a man like Charlie? I'm so lucky to have him here, you know, to watch over me and take care of me. All's right with the world. Is it? Well, my life is perfect. It's going to get even better, of course, once Charlie and I are married. That reminds me, Charlie and I were just talking about living here together at, at Linden. Is that your plan? Well, I think it would make a tremendous amount of sense. Of course, Charlie is not so sure, but I adore Linden. <laughs> well, I don't think it's really me. <laughs> well, of course, we would redecorate, darling. Uh, we would change some colors, introduce some masculine touches. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Mr. Merrick, I can't seem to get your hunting lodge out of my mind. Is that what? Yes, I mean, ever since that, that night when I stumbled on it, it just, um, it's haunting me, and I don't know why. Perhaps you felt at home there. Now that you mention it, yes, I did. Something about the, um, the charm. The colors, the furnishings, there's just such a, a very warm, very intimate feeling to the place. I'm not embarrassing you, am I, Mr. Mary? No, not at all. Well, that's good. Because I guess what I'm trying to say is that it just has this romantic feeling to it. <sighs> I'm remembering something. Something about the lodge. Yes, it's coming back to me now. Um, uh, it feels important. Uh, well, what is it? That's it. Mr. Merrick's hunting lodge reminds me of that place we escaped to in Big Sur, Charlie. Do you remember that place where we just, we had finished this promotion in San Francisco and we just wanted to lose ourselves? <laughs> and that's what we did, didn't we? I mean, boy, did we ever. <laughs> Women can't seem to get enough of that. Rugged romance. Oh, well, that's why your hunting lodge just haunts me, Mr. Merrick, because of that, that fabulous time that Charlie and I had. Those were fantastic times, weren't they, darling? Right. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> oh, Charlie, if we could redecorate Linden to look like Mr. Merrick's hunting lodge, then, oh, boy, our marriage would just sizzle from day one, wouldn't it? Well, I was a little bit alarmed. I heard you got a phone call and you rushed out of the office and you came straight to the hospital. I'm sorry, Captain. Uh, why are you so concerned? I got a call regarding your information uh, about the mortgage application and I couldn't answer the question, so... Do you always chase down your foot soldiers when they've got a story? Well, I'd say you're a bit more than a foot soldier and... and this is a critical story. Critical, as in Pulitzer Prize critical, or as in something else? What else? Well, I don't think it's probably just fear of deadline syndrome. Maybe 
Maybe it's something else. Could it be fear for Edmund? Could it be you still care? I care about the redlining article. I thought you did too. Yeah, I do. That's all I've been working on today. Well, I just thought it was odd that you left your research notes on your desk. I'll get back to it, okay? Well, I thought this might make it easier. It's, it's your notes, you know, if you want to... If you want to work on it at home later tonight. Perfect. Thank you. Well, you didn't say, um... You know, why you rushed out of the office? Priorities. Priorities? Yeah, friendship. Oh. A friend of mine's mother may be dying. Oh, I had no idea who... No, it's okay. It's just Ted and Nola Orsini. They're business partners of Dimitri, and uh, they've been staying at Wild Wind, and uh, they're just wonderful people, and we became fast friends, and Nola just had a heart attack. I'm sorry. Yeah. Listen, you know how much this redlining article means to me? Look, I know you've given it 100%, I know. And I will give it 150 when I get back, okay? Any time that I lose here, I'll make up. I just... Ted needs a friend right now. Isn't there any other family? No, no, they're strangers in this town. I mean, the whole... It's just a lousy situation. And, um, I think maybe I can help. I think it's wonderful that you're there for him. Mm. Yeah. Don't get any ideas. About? About one appearance in a chapel making me a saint. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello? It's long distance. I think that I should take us in the other room. Excuse me. One minute, please. I thought that her being here, well, nothing has changed. She still doesn't remember me. True. But at least she thinks you're a heck of a guy. I mean, you can be friends. Yeah, that's not good enough, and you know it. Well, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp yeah, stick. Li listen to me. Erica and I were in love. Now, somewhere, deep down inside, she must remember that. I haven't seen any sign of it so far. We had a once-in-a-lifetime kind of commitment. Now, if she doesn't remember that now, it's still there in her heart. Yeah, but if it ain't up here, you're out of luck. Well, I'll just have to put it up there. You're gonna force Erica to love you? I am going to win her all over again. Do you think that's gonna be easy? Erica and I had the real thing, Charlie. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that back. I swear that I'm going to get that back. I've been given a second chance. I'm not going to blow it. It's not up to you. The, uh, amnesia. It, uh, is it the biggest problem? Could have fooled me. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding. No, I, I'm, I'm being very serious. If Erica thinks that she's in love, she isn't. And you are going to step aside and let me get on with things. That's what I'm going to do. Huh? If you care about Erica, yes. Interesting strategy. Remove the competition. What if I don't want to oblige? His tantrum was triggered by his hatred of having to return to your house. Oh? Is that why his hysteria subsided so quickly? Is that why he was so eager to run out and jump into my car? The boy loves me. He wants to be with me. You manipulated that boy. You tempted him with every material possession you could possibly think of. Bribing a child. That is lower Seducing than Seducing your own child with, with things that money can buy. That is, the, that is the most ridiculous tactic I have ever seen you use. I have done nothing of the kind. Of course, that's what you're doing. You were standing there tempting him with, with money and possessions. I mean, come on. 
Don't you think that that's, the child's going to be affected like that? You're going to turn him into a, a shallow, greedy version of you. Now, what I'm going to do is to shape him into a major player in every issue of his life. I'm going to turn him into a fearless, towering man who can rule the world. In short, what I'm going to do is make my son a great man, just like his father. have feelings about him, you know. People come here asking for help, advice, you know, try to get in touch with a higher power or something. Yeah, that's the idea. They also come looking for redemption, you know. It's quite a concept, redemption, you know. You, you mess up, you're forgiven, you're, you're redeemed. myself with you. You should be thinking about the Orsinis right now. Yeah. Why shouldn't I mess that up too? No, you won't. Sorry, I... I really do care about them. I believe you. But that doesn't balance things on the ledger book. You and me, I mean, I know one... <clears throat> Kindness to strangers doesn't make me a nice guy. I'm not judging you. No, I'm doing a real good job of that all by myself, Brooke. I, I can't stop thinking about you. I wish you wouldn't. I, mean, I just I can't forget what a mess that I've made. We've had this conversation before. But can we just finish this one, just please? Now, I know I've had a lot of things been driving me and I've been obsessed and I, and I let myself be taken over by him. It's done, Edmund. Look, not a morning goes by that I don't wake up. Not a day goes by that I don't just think about... It just tears me up when I think about how much that I have lost. Edmund, please. You were right. I mean, you were right about everything. I couldn't face myself. I was in denial. And now... Now that I can face... It's not important that anybody else notice. Well, um, listen, you, um, <clears throat> you know that Erica forgot everything. And uh, I wouldn't blame you if you did the same. I have to go. Dimitri wants to start all over, you know. I wish we could. Give Erica some space. It's not what she wants. Oh, uh, what, what does she want? Affection from her fiancé. Which you're more than uh, happy to uh, provide, right? What man would? Once upon a time, Erica and I were very, very hot together. But you would have me dump her, right? That would make her feel real secure. That is not what I'm asking. Good. Because I happen to really get a kick out of having her adore me. Having her look at me with those gorgeous eyes. Having her hang on every word I say. Having her want me around all the time. Can I get the picture all right? Good. I want to tell you something. She's going to wake up, and Erica is going to remember that she loves me. Yeah, well, until she does, I'm going to be whatever she wants me to be. And as for what you want, I'm not going to get out of this picture until I know that it's right for Erica. And that it's right for me. That was the strangest call. Oh, uh, yeah? Who was it, darling? Well, it was someone named Elena Laszlo. She was calling about a, a cosmetic deal that apparently we made. I didn't know what she was talking about. Uh, Erica, if, if, uh, if you'd like, uh, I, I know Elena Laszlo. You do? 
Y yes, uh, I happen to uh, be familiar uh, with her deal at Enchantment, too. Well, did you work for me? Uh, f for a short time, yes. I, if you'd like, I could be your go-between with Elena. Would you? Well, thank you. Um, it's my pleasure. Great. That's really thoughtful of you, Dimitri, but I think we should put a hold on this until Erica goes back to work full time. Uh, yeah, uh, whatever Erica wants. My sentiments exactly. And uh, now it's kind of late, so if you'll excuse us. This is in the office, and Erica and I aren't really worried about business right now. <laughs> I'll, say, I'll say goodnight. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for stopping by. What a control freak. Why did you do that? Why on earth did you throw Dimitri out? Dixie. Shh. Hey, come on. Stop fidgeting. She should have been here by now. You have to rest. The girl is not important. Yes. Yes. She's very important. You've got to rest. You've got to keep quiet. She's key to everything. She's She's got to be here. Right, right. She will be. She will. And when she does, I'll talk to her. And, and we'll straighten everything out. But right now, I can't concentrate on any woman but you. I want you to rest. I want you to get better because I love you very much. After you're better, I'll find the girl. No. You don't have to find her. I've found her just like I found you. All my children will continue in a moment. She's here. Mother. I found her. Mother, She's stop here talking. In Pine Relax, Valley. you've got to take it easy. Mother? <laughs> Hang in there. There's something wrong. You're gonna have to leave. I can't You'll leave. upset her, please. What if something happens? Please, just go. Mother? Listen to me. I love you. You're gonna be fine. I know you will. Yes. Don't talk, Mrs. Orsini. What? Please, Ted. Dixie. You ran off with Adam. Uh, it's just a temporary whim. I, uh, Junior is not completely hypnotized oh, by heavens. Adam. Oh, heavens, no. Of course not, but you know, he is a kid, honey, and that's how kids are here, there, all over the place. Mood changes just like that. Adam didn't win him over. He loves you. Yeah, he's totally devoted of to you. Of course. I mean, Ted, he was the same way when he was that age. He had a cherry lollipop. That was his favorite till somebody gave him a grape, and then wham, what grape was his favorite flavor. I mean, that's just how kids are. This isn't about lollipops. No, no, it isn't, but Junior is too little to be able to see past the moment, honey. You can't read too much into what just happened. No, Adam has not won. And he isn't gonna win. Not while there's a breath left in my body. This, this just isn't about the custody case, don't you see? It's what's gonna happen to Junior. I mean, I saw it, I saw it as clear as I've ever seen it. He's, Adam is trying to turn him into a little version of him. All right, excuse me. Yes? Hey, darling, it's Ruth. Listen, Nola or... Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Well, she really wants you here, and I think her family must need you, too. I, I've just... I just got so distracted. 
Well, if, if you'd rather not come, I'm sure I could get somebody to cover for you. Is there anything wrong? Is there anything going on with Junior? No. No, everything is just fine. Um, I'll leave right now. Are you sure you can? <sighs> yeah, look, what good is a patient advocate if she can't be there when the going gets tough? I'm sorry, I've kept you waiting. Oh, it's all right, sweetheart. Listen, uh, you know, I really could get somebody else. No, no, it's okay. I'll be right there. Bye-bye. Dixie, honey, do you really think it's a good idea to go to the hospital right now? Surely somebody else can help. It's my job. And Mrs. Orsini's been very kind to me. I, I really feel like I owe her. Every time I see her, I, I have to say something. I mean, when she walked in here before, I, I thought... I thought I saw a glimmer of what used to be between us. Didn't Brooke see that, too? She had no reason to. You know, Dimitri, I really didn't... I wasn't asked much from her. She just wanted me to get a carton of milk and take out the garbage, go see a shrink so I wasn't a jerk, and I couldn't do it. Edmund, you've changed. You've been, you've been in therapy. It's too late as far as Brooke's concerned. Is that how you feel? No. No. Now that I'm getting shrunk for me and not for Brooke, I kind of like it here. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> At least I know there's a reason for the nightmares instead of just ruining my sleep. It takes a lot of guts to stay in therapy. Yeah, for all the good it'll do me. You know, the irony of this is that I... I'm getting saner by the minute and I still feel like hell. <sighs> I'll be back. Listen, I'll lighten up, I promise. No, no, I, I just need to do something. Something that should have been done a long time you chase Dimitri out like that? We had I, him right where we wanted him. I didn't him. chase him out, okay? I merely suggested that he remove his carcass from the premises. But we, we were so close to success. You, I can only stand so much power tripping, okay? <laughs> that guy is as bad as you painted him. I want to be the macho king of the mountain. Oh, come on. I didn't notice him exuding so much macho this evening. Yeah, well, he saved it till you left the room. Oh, really? Then what? Then he ordered me to surrender the field so he would have a clear shot at winning my lady's hand. You're not kidding? Nope. Well, that's utterly delicious. Try utterly obnoxious. Well, what did you say? I told him I like it where I am. Not to count on my cooperation. Oh, Charlie, you are brilliant. Well, that was the idea, wasn't it? No kid for revenge? Yes, it was, and it is moving along a lot more quickly than I thought. So you say. Well, what's wrong? I caught some of that hoodoo that you do so well. Oh, Charlie, you're being silly. Okay, well, just don't go all woozy and romantic on me, okay? And and fall in love with this guy all over again, you're gonna have a major mess on your hands. Charlie, you know, um, it's rather amusing the way you leapt right in there. Almost as if you're the one who's falling in love again. Me? With you? Well, it would be only natural under the circumstances. But don't do it, Charlie. You know it would just complicate things even more than they already are. I'm a big boy now, Erica. I think I have the strength to uh, resist your considerable charms. Sweet dreams, Amy. 
Dimitri, did something happen? No, no, I wanted to talk about Edna. I suppose saying no to you would just postpone the inevitable. Thank you. Look, you realize I don't want to hear anything that you have to say about your brother. I, I do, I do. But you won't keep it to yourself, right? Well, everyone uh, accuses me of being stubborn and trying to run things. Sounds accurate. Look, sometimes it's necessary to step in and put things straight. But is this the world according to Dimitri Merrick? What are you going to set straight, me or Edmund? I have gotten to know my brother pretty well. I'm glad for you, Dimitri. Yeah. I really am. I'm glad for both look, of look, you. Look, he can't stop thinking about you. He talks about you, wishes that he could have done things differently. And your name comes up in every conversation that we have. Well, why don't you just change the subject? He is turning himself inside out, doing everything that he can to change. He always thought that he could just wave a magic wand and everything would be better. No, 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 wait, wait a minute. You call entering open-ended, long-term therapy, waving a wand? Therapy? Edmund? Yes, he's been seeing Dr. Tolan for uh, a few weeks now. You didn't know? Edmund didn't tell you. About seeing a psychiatrist, no. But that would explain... Explain what? Uh, I saw him earlier today at the hospital, and uh, he seemed very different. I told you that he changed. How long did you say he'd been seeing a therapist? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. He mentioned it a, a while ago. I, I just assumed that he had told you. No, I'm... The only time Edwin ever talked to me about seeing a therapist was when he was trying to score points with me, when he was trying to get me to back off. And you were not impressed? Not in the least. This is just... it's funny. I... What is? Today, when he could have used this, this therapy, to sway me, he didn't even... he didn't even say anything about it. Look, Brooke, I, I don't think Edmund is into playing games these days. Uh, scoring points isn't what he's after. I think that he wants the nightmares to stop, chance at some happiness, to have a, a, a bright new future. Look, I've, uh, I've taken up uh, enough of your time. Uh, if I've intruded, please, no. I am... No, Dimitri. It was very generous of you to, to come. Well, maybe a little selfish, too. How so? If you could start to forgive Edmund, it would sure make living with him a lot easier. Fighting. Mothers are about the most important people in the world, aren't they? Yeah. Especially when you think you're going to lose them. 
Well, she'd start thinking about herself. All she does is worry about me. That's what mothers do. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, my mother spent her whole life trying to make things better for me. She never thought of herself, just me. Yeah? Yeah. No, it was exactly the same way. Listen, um, anything else I can do? You've been great. But I think right now I should just be on my own. Yeah. You've been here long enough. Why don't you go home and try to get some rest? Sounds good. I wish um, you could do the same. If there's any change, I'll call you. Hang in there. All right. for this sort of thing, but doesn't she deserve a few good times after all the bad ones? I mean, after all, we just found each other. Doesn't it make sense for her to enjoy just a few more years? Tell you the truth? I don't know what I'd do without her. Why does this place look so familiar? Thank you. 